Hi folks, I'm Spencer and on today's episode of Court Mania we're looking at what is possibly the creepiest animated film I've ever seen, The Wolf House. Maria. Brought to us by Joaquin Cosina and Christabel Leon, The Wolf House is this very, very unique animated art piece political statement thing film. It's a feature length, they've done other shorts and they've done a short since as The Wolf House caught the attention of Ari Aster, who people know from Hereditary and Midsummer, who has funded this new short that they did. But The Wolf House was the first thing that I heard about and it's really bloody brilliant. The basic plot concept is that there is this strange community compound cult in Chile who we're sort of introduced to through some stock footage that, you know, proper stock footage narration in which whoever is in charge of the compound is sort of telling us, oh, we've been portrayed as this horrible, weird place that horrible things happen. Uh, we're not, and we're going to show you this sort of animated film that we have that is going to explain to explain to you why we are, you know, why we are great and why we're not all these horrible things that you've been told about us. And then you go into this animated feature that tells the story of Maria, this girl that has escaped from the community, finds this house where she decides to live, hangs out with some pigs that turn into people, and it's sort of this thing that she's gone off on her own trying to make a new life for herself, but it's not going to work out. And I think this is the interesting thing. You have to remember when you're watching the, the bulk, well, the vast majority of the story, you're being told it from this perspective that it's made by the people that live in this community that think this community is all great. And this is based on an actual sort of weird cult or whatever you want to call them in Chile that was founded by like Nazis that had fled Germany and were being persecuted in Germany for being paedophiles. And, you know, this is a real place where we're having this fictional thing told about you know, from the perspective that these people have made this thing and it's supposed to be telling you that they're great, but actually it's insidious and you're seeing all these sort of... It's it's like a fairy tale being told to you by Nazis where it's constantly telling you that these things are great, but you know that they're not. That sounds really complicated and I probably made it sound a lot more complicated than it is. Voy a transformar a mi cerdito en criatura hermosa que nunca me abandonará. Desde hoy son Pedro y Ana. Now the film isn't particularly plot heavy. It's not a film that you're going to be watching for twists and turns and all this sort of stuff. But the entire story is told to you through narration. Like I said, it's like a fairy tale that you're being told. And it is the creepiest narration I can think of. You have stuff narrated by Maria, the girl that's escaped, and by the wolf, who appears to be the person on the outside that is actually part of the community that she's escaped from. And it is so creepy because it's all, it's it's all, I mean, I, I can't comment on the performances because they're in Spanish, but it is, just creepy because it's just whispered and has a tone about it that is just genuinely so unsettling and I think I'll get onto this with a little bit more discussing the overall sound design but I think if you were watching this with headphones on it would be genuinely so unsettling because it is that very sort of slow whispering and you just you can it, it's the sort of whisper that you can feel <laughs> if you get what I mean ¿Qué les parece si jugamos? Un juego divertido que inventé. 
Now the big thing about the Wolf House is how it looks and it is so incredibly unique and wonderful. It, it the, the style that this duo of art, I mean they're artists as much as they are filmmakers, it is that everything in this film is it, it is either painted onto walls or is sculpture made and you you see it being constructed and the movement of props in stop motion oh, it, stop motion is the best way to describe it although in some ways because of the painted style it has those elements that make you think of you know more traditional animated animate you know just stereotypical hand-drawn animation but because it's on walls and because you know the camera might be panning around as things are moving it also because like i said sometimes whole rooms are being painted and moved and changed between you know those individual frames that have been taken the amount of work that has gone into you know if something's got to move across a wall they've practically got to repaint the entire wall every single time there is a new frame and it is just it's impressive beyond belief i think it took them five years to make the entire film and it's the fact that i was never distracted by how impressed i was by the technicals of it because it's really really well done the the painting is brilliant the sculptures for lack of a better word because they uh, they they had rules, and I think one of them was like, they're sculptures, not figures, or something along those lines. Like, not only do they look fantastic, they're sort of big, like, almost sort of paper mache, like sometimes big paper mache heads, or these things like made out of wrapped up tape. And it's the fact that not only do you, do they look great, but you're watching them being constructed sometimes, like, completely in front of you, or watch, like, the base model come up and then it'd be painted and then the clothes will be painted on top of it and it's just amazing to watch but it all serves this story because it is that sort of weird constructed fairy tale quality i think the the artifice of it is very important and i think showing you things being made or like a hand will appear and then you will see it actually connects to the arm and then it might disappear again and the hand will reappear somewhere else and then it will... It, this construction, I think, draws a lot of evidence to this sort of, this is artificial, this is a lie that you're being told about this community. And there are very clever things in that, like I said, you're seeing things being drawn. There's a bit really quite early on in which a window is drawn, but it's drawn out of the... Instead of it being like you see a square and then, you know, you see a cross, sorry, and then it's done as a swastika that you see a bit, and it's like this subtle hint of everything that's actually going on underneath this sort of fanciful story. And the colour palette of the film is very autumnal, very bleak, very dark, and there are lots of shots in which it's very, very dark, and the lighting is incredibly artificial, and it creates this incredibly sort of haunting, spooky atmosphere. There were points where I was like, did something move around in the background? What is that? There was definitely, there was definitely something stood in a shot that moved, and I was like, was that, what, huh, what? It, it, and it's, it's through that light in that colour palette. The blacks in this are, are very, very dark. But I think because the lighting is so artificial and it, it hits them in certain ways, it's got this sort of icky, gooey feeling to it, even though that's not necessarily what it looks like. And there's just little things like models being held up by, like, sellotape being strung across a room. It just... Everything about it has this wonderful artifice to it in the best way. And it makes it so creepy and so unsettling because there's, it's never even bordering on being realistic and yet it still manages to have that uncanny nature despite the fact that it's so far removed from anything like that. I think it, it, it also has, because it, there is this handmade quality that everything is imperfect 
almost in a sort of Aardman way where you can see the, the thumbprints on things as they're moving and like paint gets spilt on the floor. It's just got this, there's a dirtiness and a grottiness and a, that just, I, you just get so involved in. Like I said, the sound design as well is is so great. You have those whispered, haunting narration pieces, and but then everything else, the sound design is so immaculate. Because I mean, this is a film made out of photographs rather than standard film, so every sound is put in afterwards, and you get these wonderful. You know, you get sounds like the pigs make pig noises. You get that sort of stuff, but then you get the sound of the the sculptures when they're being made and it's like the wrapping of the tape and you've got that, but it's so loud in the mix, it's so obvious that it just, again, it's unsettling and it's unsettling in a way that you can't necessarily put your finger on, but it's just... I think it's because it was clearly, you know, it's the sound of something, but you're too close to the sound. It's too intense. It's, it's more than you would hear in real life. And again, it's just like noises from further away in the house or the echo of things. It's just creating this alternate, surreal, nightmarish soundscape that is also very listenable. It's it's not unpleasant in a way that you like, I wish this wasn't happening to my ears. It's It's got a sort of ASMR quality to it. I, like I said, headphones or I wish when I'd seen it, I'd seen it with like a big 5.1 mix because I'd like to hear... I, it, it, it's so immersive. The sound is immersive. The picture is immersive. It's going back actually to the picture. It's a one -er. it's one shot. I mean, it isn't, it's billions of shots. But it's, it's all constructed. One of the rules that I was saying about was that they didn't want a black frame. There is no transitionary frame between. Even though time passes, you go, the house seems to mer like shift in terms of its layout. But that is done through like there'll be a point where you might zoom in on a painting and then you'll zoom back out and that painting will have become an entire wall or you will very like pull through a a wall and it will peel away in stop motion to reveal the next set it, again it's just an immersive experience and i just i really wish i'd seen it with better sound the film isn't actually like easily readily available in the UK and someone please, please, please put out a nice edition of this film. It deserves to be seen. I went into, th I, I'd heard about the film because um, it was on a list of top 10 animated films and it looked so genuinely creepy. And it is, it is unsettling and it is frightening. I don't think it's quite as sort of grotesquely unsettling as I think perhaps seeing a trailer and probably whatever clips I've put in here will look. But I think that's in part because there is just a wonder to watching it unfurl. And I think I, I was really pulled into the narrative a lot more than I thought I would be. It's certainly not going to be for everyone because it is this disjointed, quite floaty story. You know, it's it's not a, a pulse pounding thrill a minute plot line. It is just it's a mood piece, but there is enough story and enough feeling and emotion outside of it being freaky or you're just in awe of it. I I did. I did go with the film as a whole. And I think there really is nothing else like it. I've never seen it. You know, there are animated films that are weird. Oh, I reviewed the Ujicha stuff on this channel, and that's fantastic and different. 
in its own way. This is fantastic and different in a completely different way. And I would love, to, I cannot wait to see what the directors do with their next piece because, it, I mean, whether they'll get to do something on this scale again, I don't know. I really, really hope so, but I know it took years. And I know, I mean, I'd love to see they, um, the sets and the, um, the sculptures and all that were toured. Um, they were put up in exhibition places. I don't know if they were created in exhibition places, actually, because, I mean, you, you'd have to completely wreck a house, multiple houses, to make, to make a film like this. Whether they were made in gallery spaces, I don't actually know. But you could, you could go and you could see the, the, the rooms of the Wolf House, and that would be... That, that must have been fascinating. I'd, I'd love to see any making of, if there's any behind the scenes footage or anything of them constructing this stuff, I would love to see it because it's just, it really is a completely wonderful feat of just sheer brilliant art filmmaking. It, that's the thing, art cinema often gets this sort of label of it's just poncy art and or it's just an installation that's been dragged out. And I've, I've compared films to be an installation in Begotten's very installation. This has just a nice balance of it is this. It is an art piece, but it is a film with a narrative and with this political meaning behind it that is, you know, I didn't really know a fat lot about. Chilean history in this strange community but I mean it made me want to go and research it and I found it all very fascinating and I'd love to see the film again with a bit more now that I've got a bit more understanding of the politics behind it and yeah The Wolf House is just really brilliant all all their shorts because I've tracked down um, a couple of their other short films as well as that new one um, The Bones which is on movie which is worth checking out um it's a little bit different, but it's still brilliant. Uh, all their stuff has been fantastic, so yeah, go and watch The Wolf House. But that's just my opinion. Have you seen The Wolf House? What did you think of it? Do you want it to get a bloody release in the UK? Let me know down in the comments. Like and subscribe so you don't miss any more videos, and I shall see you next time.